top players, you know, mm -hmm. but not formally recognized. Mm -hmm. But some people look at this guy and they're like, you know what, this guy's the truth. He's he's on the come up. Mm, no one comes to mind exactly. I know, I know. We have too respectful of a scene. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it couldn't be Game of Thrones at all. No, you know? afraid not. <laughs> now, who would be the Tyrion Lannister of Smash as a whole? That's a better question. Because I think Smash could very well be Game of Thrones. Yeah, they could. You know? <laughs> they could. I don't know. Th Tyrion's too... <laughs> not to, to, to throw shots, but Tyrion's too awesome of a character. I can't that's really true, think of anyone true. who's like... A, Quite on that level. At least that, that anyone that comes to mind immediately for me. I'm sure. I'm sure chat disagrees wholeheartedly. <laughs> but I gotta see. You know, I, I think you just have to go down. I would put Zero as a Lannister. I would happily Maybe. put Zero down as a Lannister Maybe. for sure. Let's see it. Sort of got the prestige as a Lannister. Right. Anyways, <laughs> back to the game. We got some more shockwave action going on. SS Austin versus T Lock Zone Denti. Kind of a scary matchup, this one. The, <laughs> there's so much explosion going back and forth, you know. Ness not, not got the best recovery in the game. Cloud got extremely good edge guarding. But on the other hand, there, there's definitely a vice versa. Cloud's uh, up be very, very gimpable. And um, Ness very good at pushing people off stage with the throws that he lands. So. And Austin especially very good at capitalizing off of those off stage positions. Mm -hmm. uh, more so than most of the Nesses that we've been accustomed to see as uh, this game has gone on. Oh. Ooh, I'd be so far off stage, man. It does not matter what percent you're at. Especially on this stage of all. Yeah. Whenever like the the edge is so much closer to the side blast zone than some of the other stages. Nice. Cool. Yep, down our spike. Not gonna do it at these percents. And interesting okay. from Denti, uh, the, the big question I want to ask, he chose there to build limit instead of trying to go down with something like a Nair to close the stock off. Did you agree? Oh, no. Um, oh, no. Uh, the, and so I was actually about to say that I kind of agree with it, and that's why. <laughs> it's because you go a little bit too ham off stage, bad things can happen. And Austin was in a little bit, kind of an awkward position where he was like just below the ledge starting his up B, so getting around the um, the actual PK Thunder itself could have been pretty hard. What even happened there? It looked like he lost his double jump or something. Uh, he just went too deep for the neutral air. He, he tried to do it too far off stage. Maybe fast a little bit too long. All right, very fast for game one, going straight into game two, town and city. And aside from the blunders that we saw off stage at the end, Denzi was looking rather dominant with his callouts. Yeah, definitely. That, that first stock. Uh, the the call-out with that Limit Broken Cross Latch. Yeah, it's such a huge thing. Now, on this stage, do you think that he's going to be trying to leverage the platforms as ways to build up some more of that Limit? Absolutely, yeah. Such a safe way for Cloud to jump around. And, you know, we've seen that he played a night. We've talked about his patience. He is definitely down to just hop around and play safer until he can build enough bar to do some real damage. Safe really is the name of his game, and uh, you're seeing that with the cloud right now. You'll see that he gets some of these hits, like the up air, and instead of immediately trying to press the advantage, he gets back onto the stage, charges a little bit more limit, waits till the opponent's a bit closer, and then begins the chase. Very patient, dude. Not blowing his limit right off the bat, looking for a cleaner opportunity for it. Honestly, I think Blade Beam here. Yep. Yeah, yeah there and that's, we go. That, that was the <laughs> really the thing that I'm sure Denti was keeping in mind that, that entire time is I can pull this trigger. Now, the question is not can, but when should I? And he definitely picked a good time for it. And even if he hasn't been attending Shockwaves, I'm pretty sure he's been watching enough to know Austin on stage with uh, that low of a percent. You know he's going to be hitting that PK Thunder, too. Oh, of course. Yeah, man, so much damage from that side B. Another limit on deck. Not going to be able to finish the stock off quite yet unless he gets another one of those super far off stage side Bs. But the damage is rising. Ooh. Does he have a jump available? He does not, but it's going to be close enough to land with that up B. That's a tough spot. Ah, uh, yeah. Pretty hard to get around that PK Thunder. 
Yeah, do you think it would have been better for him to get hit by it, or...? Yeah, well, I think, um, obviously that up he didn't reach, so, uh, <laughs> not the, the decision that got, would get him out of hot water. Hard to say whether or not he would survive, but that F smash, the hard punish on the landing. Man. It hurts my soul. Uh. It hurts every ounce of my body, every fiber in my <laughs> being. <laughs> Just hurts. Yeah, Cloud F Smash kind of has like like the Warlock Punch effect. Yeah. Where like the move isn't done yet and you're just like, oh no, it I have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> right. And like you get hit and there's the hit lag and it's like, oh yes, yes, this mistake has happened. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know when, whenever uh, you get grounded by by your mom when you're younger you're, and she's like, go to the cool, go to your room and think about what you did. Yeah. That's that's, <laughs> that's what it is. That's you're just what it is. thinking about what you did. Like, uh -huh. oh god. I, I probably shouldn't have taken Susie's lunch money. Yeah, this was you know, a bad idea. I was being a dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mom. Sorry, Susie. <laughs> I won't do this again. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if Austin can avoid another Susie moment. It's game number three. And going over to Duck Hunt, uh, obviously Austin loving this stage. Uh, but let's talk about the advantages that it grants Cloud. Yeah, so of course, um, one of the biggest things about the stage is actually very anti nest The fact that it actually makes everything two-dimensional. Um, the game's hitboxes and hurtboxes usually... Ca oh, actually a lot... You, they're usually calculated in 3D. This game, this stage actually does completely flatten it. And one of the things about Ness is his air dodge goes into the ZXs for a lot of it. So it can be pretty hard for people to punish. On this stage, a little bit easier. But then with the with the counter pick here, uh, are there reasons in particular why Austin goes for this, aside from the fact that he's Austin? Uh, honest, oh, oh man, that was weird. That was really weird. Yeah, I don't think anybody who made this game took a physics class like, ever. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like bounce climate. off a tree there or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like the alt, uh, the alternate reality Whomping Willow where it's just a really nice tree. Like, I got you. <laughs> yeah, Come yeah. to me. Yeah. It'll be okay, it'll, BB. It'll be safe. It'll be safe. Avoiding the blade beam. Austin trying to get the pressure onto Denti. Goes for a back throw here and actually gets the KO. The rage, I suppose, was just enough there. Yeah. Yeah, it is going to be on Denti now to try and end this stock. He should have limit on deck coming next stock in. Yeah, so now the question becomes whether or not he's going to try to save this limit for a little bit, use the increased mobility and go for the early kill, or just hit him with a limit move and do as much damage as he can. You know, it, it, it's definitely possible he has those alternate trees available. Yeah. But what we've seen from Denti at these low percents is he's so good at stringing together the normal cross slashes mm. just to rack up so much damage. 19%, man. That's so much. Yeah. And it's not just one either. You know, you can see him yeah. get two, maybe even three. Oh. And the side B off stage once again. Denti finding it. Getting even that one was like mid, mid high percent. But that's a strong move. I don't think he missed a cross slash in that last stock at all. No. Like, it was just no. perfect. I don't think he missed a regular cross slash, period. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he missed. He, like, he, he may have missed some of the limit cross slash setups, but his actual just straight up side Bs were extremely on point.